One of our more whimsical themed gardens we've got this year is a Harry Potter garden that we've created here in our children's garden. We've got lots of colorful plants and some of the other components and things that are featured in the movies and in the books. Well, in the second movie, you might remember, Harry and Ron are driving to school in the flying car and the car gets stuck in the big tree. Well, we've got the little car here and it's stuck in a big tree. The plant we're using for the big tree is a Harry Lauder's walking stick. So we thought Harry Potter, Harry Lauder, there was some uh, correlation there. The Harry Lauder's walking stick is a plant that I really like. And if you've ever purchased one of these plants, you'll know that they're fairly expensive. And that is because they are somewhat slow growing and it is a grafted plant. And like most grafted plants, you have to maintain the top. That means if there are any suckers that sprout up from the understock or the root stock, they need to be cut away. And lo and behold, we've got a sucker from the root stock coming up here. So we want to cut that out. I've got some whoppers here. I'm just going to go down below the canopy and just cut that away with the whoppers and pull that out. And you can see this branch is a lot straighter, very upright, growing and nothing at all like the twisted, contorted branches of the Harry Lauder's walking stick. The Harry Lauder's walking stick is a great plant to use for winter landscapes. It uh, really shows up when all those leaves fall off those twisted and gnarled branches. Florists also like using the branches of the Harry Lauder's walking stick in arrangements. Well, another plant that we've got in this area is a perennial that we've had in our children's garden for a few years now. This is the Red Dragon Persicaria. We featured this plant on our program a couple years ago, and we talked about the uh, beautiful pattern of the leaf in this dark purple color. And when the plants first emerge in the spring, you get a whole lot of that color showing up in the garden. As it gets a little warmer, we do get a little bit more green in the foliage. Well, the reason I wanted to give you an update on this plant is to show you that you can't always believe what you read. A lot of the descriptions for the Red Dragon Persicaria listed as being 24 inches tall or maybe 36 inches tall, but if you look right back here, you can see the plant is easily about six feet tall. But uh, nonetheless, it is a nice perennial plant to have in the garden for this beautiful color. Well, I wanna show you a few other things we have in our Harry Potter garden. Right down here, we've got some straw flowers just to uh, have some neat, colorful flowers in our children's garden. But uh, one thing unique about the straw flowers is the interesting structures around the daisy-like heads. Now, if this were a typical daisy, we would call these the ray florets. Uh, not petals like, like, like you might think, but in the case of the straw flower, they're not ray florets either. either. They are involucral bracts. And if you kind of touch them with your, your finger there, you can see why the plant gets its name straw flower. Very straw-like in its uh, texture and makeup. But a uh, wonderful tender plant native to Western Australia. Uh, good plant to tolerate the heat and uh, can handle a little bit of drought. Well, right here above me in this redbud tree, we've got one of the props of the Harry Potter movie. This is the golden snitch, the little thing that flies around in the uh, game that the children would play. Well, we had some children come out here and uh, they were playing the game and they caught one. They caught one of the golden snitches, so we, we hung it in the tree. So if you've never seen one up close, this is what it looks like. And of course, if you're going to be playing the game, chasing the golden snitch, you have to have a, a broom to ride, is that right? Well, right here, we've got some broom corn we've planted for just that occasion. We sowed the seeds of our broom corn back in the spring, and lo and behold, we have these towering broom corn plants. And uh, you can see we've got some long handles we could make out of the stalks of our broom corn. Probably tie two or three of those together to make a nice broom head. Well, we've got Harry in our garden here. He's kind of pulling double duty as a, as a scarecrow here to kind of help chase away some of the critters that might come by but uh, he's got a head made out of a gourd. And when we uh, first put Harry out in the garden in the spring, he was a nice young lad with, 
with black hair, but you can see he's aged a little bit, kind of getting a little bit of, little bit of gray there, but uh, doing a good job as a scarecrow. There are lots of owls in the Harry Potter movies, and we've got an owl represented here in this garden. This is actually an item you can buy at a nursery to sort of act as a scarecrow in your garden. This uh, owl will help to frighten away some birds and maybe a few rodents. Well, over here in this part of the Harry Potter garden, we have the sorting hat. And you can see it was made up of English ivy, sort of a little topiary here with some uh, chicken wire and a uh, container below. Got the little hat rim there, but a nice sorting hat made out of English ivy. The colorful flowering plants below here are a type of cosmos. This is Cosmos sulfureus. It's a different species than the other typical cosmos that we see with the pinks and the uh, red and white flowers. Cosmos sulfureus, as you might think, with a name like sulfureus, the flowers are going to be yellow, orange, or sort of a red orange. And these have done really well for us this year. Cosmos seem to perform best in the garden if they are direct seeded. And we've had some of these plants reseed and sort of make a, a thicker display in the garden. Well, some of the other items we have in our Harry Potter garden include a pot of mandrakes uh, or mandrake simulated plants with some asparagus ferns and baby doll heads. We've also got moaning myrtles toilet in this garden, our continually running commode fountain in a part of our children's garden here, and the big snake that was also featured in that episode or that Harry Potter movie is also present here in this garden made up of green and gray Santa Lina. Well, if you're in the Stillwater area, you might want to bring your family by and check out our Harry Potter garden here at our studio.